It's been so long since I've been here on a Sunday, I feel a little bit like a guest speaker, but uh, turn to somebody and say, Happy New Year. Because, you know, this is the head of this next week will be the head of the biblical Hebraic year, 5784, as you heard from Rabbi. And I want to just speak for a few minutes today on possessing the double doors of hope. Amen. How many believe that that hope is a great word? Amen. And so um, this is coming into to the Hebraic year. For those of you that aren't familiar with this, we are on, we live our lives on a Roman calendar, a Gregorian calendar, and we're in the year 2023. How many figured out we're in 2023? Because it's September now. You should know that, okay? Um, but in the Hebraic year, we're coming in, I think it's on Friday, I think that starts, or Thursday that starts, 5784. And the, they always look at the eight, the last two digits, the eight and the four. So the eight or the 80 is um, the word in Hebrew. It's the word pay. Everybody say pay. And pay indicates your mouth. Everybody touch your mouth. Okay. It talks about mouth, voice, and sound. How many understand the, the things that you say are important? The sound that you make is important. Amen. The voice that God has given to you is important. And I believe that we're in a season right now where so many things are in a place that God is listening for a sound that comes out of us. Do you understand that there is a heart-mouth connection? Do you realize you can't even be born again without opening your mouth? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. How many know that believing in your heart is not good enough? You've actually got to open your mouth and make a confession. Amen? And so let me just say this. I believe in this season that we're in right now is that our mouth is activating things in the spirit that would not be activated otherwise. The, the scripture in Deuteronomy 30 says, the word of faith is nigh you, even in your heart and in your mouth, that you may do it. All right? So we have to understand that God is paying attention to what's coming out of our mouth, that our mouth is activating things. And then the four is the word door or gate or, if you will, portal. And so, if you will, we are coming into a time of voice-activated doors, how many know that we have motion-activated doors, that we walk up to the doors and the doors open? How many have ever walked up to an automatic door and it didn't open? How many broke your nose when that happened? Okay, it's a rude awakening. Well, the, during this season, it's not just about motion activation. It's about voice activation. We live in a voice-activated society. We have, we have these devices that you can speak to and they talk back to you. I don't have Alexa in my house because I just feel like that's too invasive. But we have our phone, so how many know they're listening to us anyway? We, we're in a day that everybody is listening. If you don't believe it, talk about something and then pull up your Facebook feed. Come on, we were in, we were in Nashville one time, and we were, um, I was helping somebody that had come with us. Their suitcase got damaged, and we were standing in a store, and I said, so tell me, tell me what you're looking for, and I'll help you look. Well, I'm looking for basically a, a smaller suitcase, hard case. If I, if I could possibly get one that's blue, that would be great. And, I, and while they were looking, I just opened up my phone, and there in my Facebook feed were blue hard case suitcases. Understand, things are listening to us, all right? But more than that, God is listening in the realm of the Spirit. I was, we were driving along in, in our car one day, and I was, I was speaking in tongues at the top of my voice. Just praying in the Spirit at the top of my voice. And over on the floorboard of the car, out of my purse, Surrey says, I'm sorry, Jane, I don't understand what you're saying. I kept praying in tongues. She says, I'm sorry, I still don't understand what you're saying. I was waiting for her to break out into tongues and interpretation, okay? That didn't happen, but I'll let you know if it does. 
But we are living in a voice-activated society, and I believe that we're coming into a time of open doors. How many are believing God for some open doors? How many are believing God for greater things than what you've walked in in previous seasons? Well, I want you to know that Jesus says in John chapter 10, verse 9, he says, I am the door. If anybody enters by me, he will be saved, and he will go in and out and find pasture. Just throw your hands up in the air right now and just thank Jesus that he is the door into the kingdom of God. Come on. We're doing a series right now in the kingdom of heaven. It's not just a, it's just not a gospel of salvation. It's the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, a gospel of an entire domain, and Jesus is saying, I'm the door into that domain. Amen? In Revelation, the Lord says this. He says, see, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. This is the season that we're coming into. How many understand God identifies himself as he who opens? Say, he who opens. Say that with me. He is the God that opens, and when he opens it, it cannot be shut. Amen? Now, one of the verses that the Lord has really put on my heart for this season comes out of Hosea chapter 2, verse 13. And I believe that this is really going to be something that will mark this next year ahead. How many feel, as you pray in the Spirit, how many can feel turmoil? I'm not trying to put that on you if you're not feeling it. Let me tell you, but there are, when you travel, when you go in and out of places, we were in um, Maui last week. And thank you, everybody, that, that sowed seed and that gave. We were able to, to bless the church in Maui as they're feeding the people that lost their lives, lost their proper, well, they're not feeding people that lost their lives. Y'all have to pray for me. I'm a little tired, okay, because they're really not feeding people that lost their lives. But they are feeding people that lost all their property, okay? And, and so many, there was so much grief, so much sorrow, so much disappointment, so much turmoil. But you know what? I really believe that this is such a powerful verse for them, but I believe it's for us in this upcoming year. Maui is actually called the Valley Island. And so this scripture, I think, was very important to them because when it says, I will make the Valley of Acor a door of hope. Everybody say hope. The Valley of Acor does not have a good history. It's a place where Achan stole from the Lord the things that were devoted to God, and as a result, Achan and his entire family came under judgment. But that valley of Achor, which Achor means the valley of trouble, the valley of disaster, the valley of calamity, the valley when you go through hard times, the valley of trial, the valley where you're challenged with situations, God says, I'm going to turn that valley of trouble into a door of hope. And I believe that this is a promise from the Lord in the midst of this, in the midst of this time. Because later on in Isaiah, Isaiah says that the Valley of Achor became a place where people brought their flocks to rest and to graze. How many believe that God can cause your valley of trouble or challenge or trial to become a resting place for you and a place where the peace of God overtakes you and the hope of God overtakes you, amen? Listen, we always want to talk about being on the mountaintop, but I'll tell you, it's in the valley that the fruit is grown. It's in the valley that character is produced. It's in the valley that God takes you to another level of your faith. And so God is going to turn the valley of Achor into a door of hope. 